Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Akuku. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Alright, as soon as you open up you get a good sized piece of styrofoam. You'll find a very small user's manual. Basically just one page folded in half. You'll also find your uh, terminal bolts and terminal covers and the battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the specifications of this battery. First of all, it is your typical group 31 battery. So the measurements would be 13 and a quarter inches across, about eight and three quarter inches tall, and about seven and a half inches deep. I'll go ahead and put the uh, millimeter equivalent for our crazy metric using friends. And the battery also weighs in at 22.1 pounds. All right, the case is made out of this ABS plastic and it does have this nylon strap so you can carry it nice and easy. And this strap does come off. You'll notice that the whole battery has this, uh, this blue color, like blue and black. And that is because this battery is IP67 rated. So it is completely dust and waterproof. Now that doesn't mean that you should just go dunking this thing in your lake and, and then hooking it up. That's not a good idea. But you can use it in a marine environment. You can throw it on your boat and, and power your fish finder, uh, something like that. And this would be perfectly safe. Other than the blue color, there's really not much going on for this battery. It's pretty basic looking. Uh, you will see over here uh, that there are a couple of QR codes and they are for the uh, Bluetooth app that goes along with this battery because this is actually a smart battery. So we're going to be downloading that and checking that out in a little bit. Since this is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, that means that it has a wattage capacity of 1280 watt hours. Uh, it does say that charging it, you should charge it at 20 amps um, with a max charge rate of 50 amps and a discharge rate. Lithium iron phosphates typically like 20 amps of discharge rate as well. But they do say that you can discharge this at 100 amps max continuous. Uh, so we're going to be testing that and we'll also see how high we can get it because nowhere in the documentation or the website does it say uh, what is the max amperage load. So, you know, we're going to try to push 200, 300 amps out of this thing to see if it'll shut off. Also nowhere on the website or in the manual does it say anything about cold temperature charging protection. So after we download the app and check that out, see if there's any indication that it has cold temperature charging protection, uh, we'll probably just go ahead and throw it in my deep freezer and see if it actually does. All right, so the first thing you should do with your lithium iron phosphate battery when you receive it is check the voltage at the terminals to make sure that it was shipped to you properly. Uh, they usually want to ship them at around 50%, so that would be roughly 13.1 volts to 13.2 volts. So let's check that now. And it is 13.23 volts. That is perfectly acceptable. All right, the next thing you should do with your battery after you receive it is charge it up all the way. And if you have the ability, do a capacity test to make sure that you're getting the 100 amp hours that you paid for. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to charge it all the way up and then we're going to test it just to make sure. Okay, so let's see the final capacity of this uh, Akuku 12 volt battery. And you can see right there that we have 106.53 amp hours. So that is six and a half percent higher than the 100 amp hours that it says that it has. So I'm going to go ahead and get this battery charged back up and we're going to do some high amperage testing. Okay, now I have this Akuku 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery set up for high amperage testing. What we have is our 100 amp hour battery connected to a 5000 watt 12 volt inverter from MX Moonfree. Now that's going to be powering a 200 watt heater, a 500 watt heater, a 1100, a 1100 watt griddler, and a uh, a new wave that can go up to 1300 watts. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set this up for 100 amps of draw because that's the maximum for this battery. And I'm going to go ahead and just run it for five minutes to make sure that it can work. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the app on the screen so you can watch that as we go. 
Um, I'm not gonna show the entire five minutes. I'll show like the first 30 seconds and like the last 10 seconds, whatever. Anyway, after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do high amperage testing to see when this battery shuts off. It really should shut off between 150 amps and 250 amps after like 30 seconds. Um, if it doesn't, then that's a fail. And then if it doesn't shut off at all, we'll probably plug it into our ShopSmith and see what happens there. So let's get started. Turn on the inverter. All right, let's go ahead and put the uh, app on the screen. We're going to turn on our 500 watt heater first. So you can see that it's pulling about 40 amps. And then we're going to set our new wave to 600 watts and press start on there. And now you can see that our current is now 93 amps. So then we're gonna turn on this 200, this 200 watt heater. And that should push it up to like 111 amps, something like that. Let's go ahead and hit start. Our timer has started. And it looks like, wow. All right, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. The battery shut off after running 120 amps. So uh, this battery doesn't have much of a, uh, you know, not much of a ceiling, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, if you're going over 100 amps, this battery is not gonna allow it. So let's go ahead and start this again. And what we'll do this time is we'll do nine, oh, everything just turned back on. Let's go ahead and leave this, uh, this heater on and we'll go ahead and set the, uh, the new wave to 900 watts. And that should give us right at that 100 amps that we need. All right, the current on the app now shows 96 amps. So let's just run this for five minutes just to make sure it can do it. All right, well, it's been five minutes since we started this test and it has been pulling 94 to 95 amps continuous with absolutely no problem at all. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and see how long it takes for this battery to shut off once you go over amperage. So what I'm going to do is we're doing 95 amps right now. Let's go ahead and give it another 100 amps and see how long it takes. So once this reaches 540, I'll click this on. There we go. At 540. Amperage is now 200 and almost 220. 20 seconds, oh, 10 seconds, I'm sorry. It took 10 seconds for it to shut off. All right, well, I am pretty impressed with the programming this battery has. Uh, the safety features are real tight and I don't mind that one bit. When your documentation says that it, you can do a 100 amp discharge continuous maximum, you really shouldn't have much more than that. So I like the fact that at 120 amps after 10 seconds, this thing shut off. Uh, you know, and it, and it did give us, it gave us that 270 amps for 10 seconds and then it shut off. So my question is, I wonder if it can power up my ShopSmith because this bad boy will push like 400 amps, but just for a second and then it runs at like 80. So I'm wondering uh, how much of a surge this battery can actually handle. So let's go ahead and try to start this thing up right now. All right, now I have an amp clamp hooked on to the cabling of the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this on now. Yep. It, uh, it, it ran it for uh, half a second, but it couldn't do it. The, uh, the amp surge though, the amp surge was 384 amps. So it was able to do that for a split second. All right, now that we know that this uh, battery can do 100 amps continuous and can pull up to 380 for not very long, uh, let's go ahead and throw it in the freezer. It doesn't say anything about it having cold temperature charging protection. So I'm guessing it's not going to have it but it would be a great bonus if it did. So let's just throw up my freezer for 24 hours and try to charge it. All right, well, I just pulled out this Akuku 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery straight out of my deep freezer. And let me pull up the app 
to show you what we're looking at. Now it shows that the state of charge is at 88%, which is pretty accurate still. But what I care about is the temperature. It says that the MOSFETs are at negative 17 degrees Celsius or 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way too cold for this thing to actually try to charge. But if it doesn't have cold temperature charging protection, the BMS won't care. So what we're gonna do is try to charge it and see if it does. So I'm gonna use this Latime charger right here. And you'll see that it has a blinking green light. That means it's on standby right now. So when I connect this battery charger up to this battery, what's gonna happen is it will go to a solid red, which means that it's charging. If it has cold temperature charging protection, it will stay a solid red for about two seconds or so. Um, and then it will go to a solid green. What's happening is that the battery is basically telling the charger to shut off because it doesn't want to be charged any further. So let's go ahead and connect it up and see what happens. All right, here we go. All right, charger is turned on. And it shut off. Look at that. So that means this battery does have cold temperature charging protection. That's great. They really need to put that in their documentation. All right, so what do I think of this 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery from Akuku? Well, uh, I'm not gonna kid you. I didn't really have high hopes for this. I thought it was not gonna perform well at all. But this battery has surprised me. It has actually performed beautifully. It gave us like, what, 106 amp hours of capacity, which is 6% over what it claims. It can do a constant 100 amp discharge for five minutes with no problem. And once you go over that, like I think I ran it at 120 amps, it shut it off. So, and it also can do a surge. We did a surge on my, my ShopSmith and it got up to like 350 amps. So it does have a surge capacity as well. One of the things I could not find out in the documentation or on the website on whether it had cold temperature charging protection, and it sure does. So this is actually a full featured battery. And on top of that, it has an app. So you can actually see what's going on with the BMS via the app. So all in all, uh, I would say a Cuckoo made a pretty good battery. And right now on this filming, which is the middle of August, 2024, this battery goes for $199. So that's like, that's cheaper than your lead acid batteries. So if you have any questions about the Akuku 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description, just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.